today's lesson is about projects. We're going to create some projects, a separate section in Autodesk than the regular tickets. Uh, a lot of the functionality is the same for the tasks and the, and the tickets, they, they look similar. But a project is a separate bucket of how to work on, on, uh, on a particular item. I know there's people that work an entire project into a ticket, but it's very difficult when you have a lot of hours, a lot of resources to keep track of where you stand. That way you're going to create a project, which is a true project set up in, uh, in Autodesk you can really use. I'm going to show you how. We're going to create one from scratch and then we're going to create one from a template. There's a way to have the plus sign on the top. There's a project and a project from template. There's also a proposal and creating a project template. The last one I will get to you in a bit. Proposal or an internal project it will be handled in a separate video. First, I'm going to start with creating a project. We can do this from here, but there's also a way once you're really in the project section, uh, by default, it comes up with the search section for a project. There's also the new button, and there's also where you have this, the, the items, and we're going to create a new project. Autodesk will tell you which ones are the obligated fields, but I'll also tell you which ones are fields that you can fill out a little bit more. The first one is the, the name. It needs to be uh, having a name. I'll call it project from scratch. It needs to have a company assigned to. And there's this choose whatever client in this case. The type is client. By default, that's the standard setup. There's also the proposal and the internal ones. Those are two different types that you can use for particular uh, items. And I will uh, explain that in a diff different lesson there. We get a little bit more information on why to use that and when. Start date and the end date. Make sure that those ways are realistic. So let's say that we're going to start on it on the June 1st. And we're going to end on the, the June 30th. Duration is, let's say, called five days. And that's just to keep track on how many days you will be needing for this particular project. It does not mean that the start date and the end date is related to it. That's going to be further in the schedule. Uh, in this case, it's just the end date and the work could be maybe five days, but you have some ver verification with a client or a vendor or cancellations that might take a little bit longer. So always make sure that you have realistic dates in here because these dates are being used also back into the, uh, the, the schedule of the project. Line of business depends on what you set up. Again, it was uh, explained in a separate lesson. Uh, you can use the general security or general services, or if you say this is a different line of business, then you can create a new one, not directly from here, but from the particular admin item. External project number is usually a number that you get from a different project system, or maybe even the client will give you a project number. Purchase order number, you can also manually fill it out. That would be a number that maybe the client gives you as a purchase order for this one. You can also fill out your own internal uh, project number or a purchase order number or your own quote number as an approval so you know where it's linked to. Description, you can also add some more verbiage in here where it came from. This is all just test. And the purchase order number is kind of referencing to usually to the order where it came from. Usually when you get an order, that's related to an opportunity. Uh, by here, you can open up an opportunity. In this case, for this client didn't have any opportunities open. Um, we can create a find another client. I know, for example, this one has an opportunity open. Let's see over here. Now we can select a uh, opportunity. Let's say it was this opportunity and now the link. That opportunity, you can see that there was a project created and this project, now you can see that it came from this new workstation request. Client doesn't have any, uh, any uh, associated contracts. As you can see, it's grayed out. There's nothing I can, I can select, but there's the plus button and where you can create a, uh, a new contract. Department, you can also select in which department you want to have this one. We'll put it under, uh, under administration. You can also put it under engineering. Some people also have a department that's specifically for project. Now, I'm going to open up this estimated revenue costs together with this associated uh, with, because you can add a fixed price contract and that contract will have the same price, most likely, as what you had in the quote. Let's say it was 5,000. You have a fixed price contract and then you add it over here. You can also add that 5,000 over here. And you can also add maybe, let's say there was $100 expected in project charges. Once you go with the project, it will fill out the cost by labor that's being posted or the project charges that are being added. And then this section will be automatically calculated. And that's where you can see how your project is going based on, on profit wise. Now, once you associated a, a contract with it, you also have the ability to track it from there. Creating a fixed price contract is going to be a separate lesson again. Sorry, we have a, lots of references today to other lessons, but this is just focused on getting you done with a project and finding the, the good settings. So this one is a section of uh, tracking the revenue on the, on the item. 
and collect those items. We were with team members, team members where you can add the team members that are part of your system. You can add more, but you can also add them on the fly when you are going to add them on the, on the tasks. The daily resource capacity is by default set up in your system. Six hours, we would recommend to leave it at six. Some people put it at six and a half or seven. And there's also the checkbox to use the capacity to calculate duration for fixed work tasks. Usually we leave it off, but you can turn it on. Then you can also a little bit play with it, how that uh, interacts with your system. Schedule setting, by default, that's been set up correctly. Uh, every time we open up a new project, it will have these defaults. Internal location, you can check which one uh, location you want to select. Excuse me, what can you say? Engineering office. And we want to have check marked these boxes always that we don't work on non-business days, the Sundays and the Saturdays, the not holidays. And also display a warning when you attempt to schedule a task if the primary resource has a proof time that might prevent the work from being completed on time. So that's a good one too. Make sure to always leave this one in place. But if you are creating a project for some work that you may be committed to do in a, in a holiday, then of course you need to turn it off because otherwise it will give you conflicts on scheduling it. User-defined fields. There's no user-defined fields in this system. You can uh, later on, once you get a little bit more experience with projects, you can add some user-defined fields. Maybe you want to put your monthly recurring revenue as an expectation in there. Uh, you can also put in your, uh, maybe it has to do with a pandemic related item or, or other items that you want to track. The estimated revenue and costs is over here. We just explained that one. And the last second is the notification. Only use this one when you really want to use uh, to notify somebody on the fly for this project. What we recommend is to create a workflow rule that, uh, that gives basically all the people that need to be aware of a new project that automatically gets them a notification. That way you don't have to remember when you create a new project to notify people, only a specific person maybe they say, okay, this one might need to be added and it's not part of the regular flow, but the regular flow should be coming to a workflow rule. Again, workflow rules is a, in a separate section. I'm not gonna explain that here today. The project will open up in the schedule, uh, schedule view. And I'm gonna quickly go back to the summary view on top here from the kind of the, the menu. And here you can see all the summaries of this particular project. You have the ability to edit it here through this button over here. And as you can see here on the bottom, there's also a, a section about the progress. Now. There's also the buttons you can collapse these ones and it makes you a little bit better visible. You can collapse that one. And in this case, we're gonna see the progress. As you can see, no hours uh, added, no actual hours. And those ones will be filled out once we go into the schedule. I'll show that all in a bit and I'll get back to here. You can see how that all looks like. Here you also have the button to add new team member or a charge or an expense. It's all done from here. And you also have the tools box where you can complete the project, inactivate it, delete it. And sometimes you make a mistake. Don't worry, you can delete it from here. Once there's no uh, activities really been posted, then you have the ability to still delete an entire project. You can also save it as a project template, which I'll get to you in a bit. You can do a report of what's due and you have the document merge. And again, some of those reports are also to be found over here. The team is where we can add team members to the system. The charges is where we can add charges to the system. Related tickets would be when there's a ticket for this particular client that is uh, causing the project. So a project can become uh, when you uh, do something from a particular quote, but it can also become from an issue that you say, okay, I'm gonna install a project and I'm gonna uh, fix that. You can associate a ticket with it. You can also here check this box, include completed tickets. Let's see if this client, yeah, client had some, some completed tickets. If you click on the hyperlink, it will open up the ticket. Once you want to select this one, click here in this, for example, the ticket title, then it will show up here on the selected items. And once it's selected here, you can press save and close. Now, once this ticket has been added, and if there's hours booked, in this case, there's zero hours booked, so that's good. But if there were hours booked on this particular uh, ticket, then those hours would also be uh, listed in the amount of hours used. This ticket came from a closed opportunity, and that's usually what uh, we make default when you have a ticket that's created from an opportunity, from a closed opportunity. We always link it manually uh, to the project, so you have a good reference between the opportunity, going to the ticket, going to the project, and vice versa. The note section is where you can put all kinds of notes. Also, when you make changes to the project, the system by itself also records notes over here. You have a calendar. In this case, there's nothing in here, but you can press a new and you can create a new calendar item. Same kind of applies for attachments. Right now, there's nothing, but you can create a button from new. And you have the user-defined fields that I earlier spoke about. There's nothing here. And we have the related reports. There's a couple of reports that you can use. 
Uh, once you have all kinds of uh, statuses and or tasks in the system, you can use what's due, daily status, schedule summary. And you kind of have to uh, play with these ones a little bit to make sure, okay, what is working for you? How can you get more grasp on the project? And some people often like to get the schedule and just to export it to Excel. So there's different ways of doing it. Now let me get back to the schedule because here's the actual, uh, actual stuff being happening. Right now, there's nothing. Now, what we recommend is to use phases. So in this case, we're going to create a new phase and we're just going to open it up here in the schedule. So it's going to be easy to, to see. Let's call it uh, investigation. Try to make do the phase maybe in capital letters that it, uh, that it easily, easily stands out. Investigation will only be for, let's say, for the first week. Press save. Now we created a phase. Now we can say, okay, let's do a, uh, a task. And these ones will all open up in this, in this, uh, in this screen. Call it first test, task. Say estimated is hours, duration is maybe two. And I'll put a start and an end date, work type. I'll just fill in right now something, and that's it. That was an easy way of adding a task. There's also more, I don't want to say complicated way of creating a task, uh, but that's by going to uh, creating the new, and then you open it up in a new page. And indeed, like that opens up a new page. page and what you will see is that this screen will uh, look very much similar to the tickets, but now in this case, it's for a uh, task. Here you have the ability to even put a priority to a uh, to the task. We'll call it second test task. You have the ability to put add a description. As you can see, you have to fill in more information. It's going to take a little bit longer to fill in all this information. You can put the priority order. Of course, select the proper phase. In this case, there's only one phase, but you can uh, add them. Uh, what you can also do over here is you can add the predecessor tasks. The little menu. You can open it up. In this case, we have very simple. We only have one uh, predecessor task, so I'm going to select this one. It will list it here on the bottom. And then you press OK, and that way you can all link them. And for the people who are much more familiar with uh, with how to work projects, now you can see that pro uh, that uh, the project system in Autodesk has a lot of tools for you uh, to really work these projects on a with a true project management style. Let's fill in the estimated hours of two hours. Uh, we also have here a start date and an end date. Let's say we're going to start this one on the fourth and we're going to end it on the fifth. And we're going to add the work type. And I also click on the menu button and we'll just select one. I think right now I've selected all the necessary fields, but as you can see, there's still, uh, we can select the primary resource. Uh, we can select the contacts. In this case, I will say press save and close. And it gives me right away already a, uh, a message that there's an issue with the regular business day. Uh, so that works. I'm sure you want to continue. In this case, I'll say yes. And now I will save this particular task and you will see that it will pop up on the schedule. Once it pops up on the schedule, we can do an, uh, a quick uh, refresh. I'm going to show you a couple of buttons here on the top. Let's hear the refresh button. As you can see over here, it's already the second task, and it's listed in a different order than the first task task. Now what you can easily do, you can move these ones up, and you can move them up. So this way, how you can quickly uh, modify uh, items. Okay, this is a circular reference because I uh, made a dependency on those ones. I'll show you a different item where you can easily uh, do it. Um, what I wanted to show you, these buttons over here, there's the summary item. Now you can see that the estimated hours, because I filled in one hour on that one and two hours on the other one, there's a total of estimated hours is now three. So this is a quick way how to get to your project. Now you can list all these items here one by one by one. Uh, that's going to be a lot of work. So we always recommend to use a template. I'm going to show you how to create a project from a template, and you will see how fast it will go, and I will give you a better insight on uh, how that goes. So I'll go again to the plus sign. I'll say create a new project from a template. And this one will right away give me the new project screen, which looks a little bit familiar, but right away it pops up with import from which template. And as you can see, there's, all, uh, there's a couple of them we have in the system. I'll select this first one, network implementation. Select next. It gives me a couple of questions. It's sort of a wizard to uh, ask me which one I want to put this one on. First one is you have to select the company. Put it today on Able. I'll have a start date and an end date. Put a little bit further out. 
Now it calculates, it says a 92 duration because it's really also from the system it has a calculation and that's all what you have to do. The rest is already pre-filled. You press next. It will show you the entire schedule of items that are in the project template. Now you can select to import everything and then modify from there. But you also have the ability already over here to select only the ones that you want to have. You select a face, it will select the face in its completely. But you can also select uh, by default and you hold the control key. Uh, same as in the, in the regular office products on what you want to select. So if you select them by the face, it will select the entire face. If you select just the last fast phase or that last task, it will select that one. Or if you just want to have everything, you just check mark the box and it will do everything. Again, don't worry about uh, that you missed anything because you can still, once it has imported everything, you have everything there. So it's maybe even easier to import everything first and then make quick modifications from there. You have a couple of additional items that you want to copy. You want to copy either way the calendar items, the project charts, the team members, and the project settings. We usually recommend to use the bottom two. If you have a different team, then not even that one. Project charges you don't want to do and calendar items neither because those ones were specific for that particular project. But the project settings, yes, for sure you want to copy that one always with. And then you press the finish button. And then basically your project has been created. Now we can go to all those other settings and listen to an opportunity or creating to a contract. Uh, I think I, I explained that a little bit. We don't have to go into those details to do that again. I just want to show you that now we have created, we used a template for creating a project. And now it will come much more to life because now, as you can see, right away we have an entire screen of items on the, on the, uh, on the view. Now, for example, if you go here with the, the estimated hours, we have 43 hours and now we have a calculated duration of 46. So this is where we have a good insight of, of where the status is. Now we can also go to the summary. And if we look over here, as you can see, it remembers the, what you collapsed, yes or no. And as you can see over here, we have the progress that we have the estimated 43 hours, but actual hours are zero. So, and complete, it's not complete. So here you can make a progress. Once you fill in uh, hours, the system automatically will already know that you have booked hours and it will uh, calculate those ones here. And you can constantly go over here and make sure that your project is on track. Now let's say you have this, this particular uh, uh, item, you see schedule, and you know what, this uh, whole financial review, we never use it. Uh, you can easily, on this uh, little menu, you can either, either way delete it. You can also complete it. You can complete a phase. Um, you can also move items up and down. Over here, that's what I showed earlier. And now you can see it's been uh, shifted. And now we say, okay, this last one, we don't want to have this particular task. And we say delete. Are you sure you want to delete it? Yes. Now you have a whole section of how to delete and, and update items. And I think somebody who knows a little bit more about project can easily do it. Now what's also a good button over here? There's a export button. And that will give you the same kind of sheet in Excel. And then sometimes you can a little bit modify quicker in Excel on what you want to try to accomplish. And uh, then you can uh, quickly modify it here again. There's also the very uh, common Gantt charts functionality here. That's that button. And as you can see, that gives you a nice Gantt chart based on the calculations on the start date and the end date that we set. The system spreads out those particular tasks based on its duration. Again, for the project lovers on the wrist, this is one of the more uh, important items. And as you can see, uh, Autodesk has also this one down. You can click back on the button and then you go back to the regular schedule. Let's say you go back to the summary. And here now you have the tool and to save this one as a project template. So if you really like this project that you created or you have created a project uh, from scratch and you created a whole bunch of stuff and you have maybe 40 different line items, 40 different tasks, then here on the summary button, that's the way you have the save as project template and save it. Um, you can always do it later. Well, even when the project is completed, you can always go into a completed project and save that project as a template. And then later on, you can always pick that one back up and, uh, and save it. So don't worry if as long as you have it as a project in the system, uh, you can get to it. And going back to the schedule, uh, there's a view. You can do the outline. You can do the phases. You can basically all uh, select it from where you want. Uh, you have a whole bunch of actions too that you can import it from a CSV file as well. Uh, usually that doesn't really work uh, well. So uh, it skips the phases. So uh, we recommend not to use it, although we have the kind of the option. You can still import it from an Autodesk template. So what you can do over there 
is that you have maybe uh, three different templates already. In this case, it, this project is going to be having all those three things at the same time. You're going to create your project maybe by using the first template. And then once you have created them, you can use the import from this uh, artist template. And then you can add those other templates as well. Maybe we can even show you that I'm going to show this, for example, that one. And again, there's a whole bunch of stuff. I'm just going to select everything. Quickly going through it. And now what it will do, it will add the, all those items from the second template into this uh, first template. Now you have it all combined. So it's maybe a good way that you say you, you can even make some, some particular uh, project templates for maybe for a, uh, an email server, an application server, and SQL server. And once you create a migration for a client, you just kind of pick the, the components that that particular client has. So now we have lots of lots of uh, items in here. What other exits do we have from this menu? We have uh, recalculate the project schedule. Let's see if we can click on it. And that will give you a little bit more uh, information. It's recalculating the project schedule may change the task phase and issue. You have set your project settings to schedule tasks and issues on regular business days. These settings will be respected. Are you sure you want to do this? It's so maybe something that, something that you want to maybe try out with a little bit uh, smaller project. It can indeed uh, calculate your project schedule based on available resources and uh, what you all put into the project. Start up with a small project where you have uh, Autodesk handle this recalculation. In this case, I'm going to say no. Um, and start with the, and make also sure that, that all your resources have their allocated time booked already on the calendar. Once you do that, it should be a pretty handy uh, feature for you. Again, also from here, you have edit project settings and also delete. If there's in this case, there's no uh, hours booked on it. And that's going to be a good one here too, because I don't see that column in here. So we're going to have also the column chooser here. I'm going to add a column that says, in this case, uh, we can do the actual hours. Add it as a column. And now we have it at the end, we have the actual hours. And again, there's no hours booked on this one, so that's why it will say zero. Uh, if you would say, I want to delete this project since nothing has been booked, you should be able to still be able to delete the project from here. Another item that I quickly wanted to show you is that if you create a new task, we really notice that there's a lot of information that needs to be filled out. There's a quicker and easier way to get to that as well, because you can use a speed code. Over here, there's a speed code, and I created already one in my personal uh, forms, and the forms is a separate lesson. Uh, but here's a test, a task preparation, and I created a form with a lot of pre-filled information. As you can see right now, it's all being filled out um, the, the status, the priority, the title, uh, you can even do the checklist if you have those ones. Again, that's something that's been uh, explained further on in a, in a different lesson, the checklist. And you can see all that information has already been filled out. So you can create a whole bunch of default forms as well. And that's how you can create a task as well. And then you can press save and close. And now you have another task added to this particular project. I think this uh, concludes everything uh, on projects. Sorry for the long, uh, long lesson, long video. Uh, but it gives you a good overview. Again, if you have questions, there's always the auditor's help file that you can have. And if you have questions on more details on our videos, please go to our uh, uh, private Facebook group and leave a comment over there. Thank you.